All right, so I found this video of this guy by the channel MEMRI. This is a good channel, by the way. Go give them some love if you want. Um, yeah, but so this video is of this Hassan guy, Hassan Rahimpur Azgadi. Is it? let me actually look at the Persian version of it so I know exactly what his name is. Um, where is it? Hassan Rahimpur Azgadi. Azgadi. Yeah. Um, right, so this guy is the the title of the video is Hassan Rahimpur Asghadi says we should use blacks in America to cause the U.S. to disintegrate. All right, um, just to let you guys know, so what is this? Who is this guy? Uh, I just want to show you guys that this is not just like a lunatic, like some random religious guy in in iran like of course every country has its fair share of lunatics so you could obviously find somebody that just says some crazy stuff right no this guy is a big deal this guy is the member of shoraya aliyah something everything some supreme hold on actually this video says it at the beginning Sh um member of the iranian supreme council of for cultural revolution so shorai that would be the shorai aliyah farhang and something hold on let me see the persian version of it um shorai aliyah and galaba farhangi all right so what does that mean so does that mean okay maybe he just have some government job no this is not just some random government job he's like this is well it's in the title it's supreme i mean so th this is a uh, hold on, shit. Okay, wait wait we're not done this is a part of the government that is responsible for making sure in iran that everything when it comes to education or culture is islamic right so if you see some non-islamic stuff in music in movies it, this guy has failed hasn't done his job so in school if um, they have to review everything they have to make sure everything is islamic okay so this guy is a part of an organization a member of the organization that is responsible for that and how how and how big of a deal they are well the only person the only people that could refute counter what these guys are saying and reject it is the supreme leader himself so there is no other authority in the entire country that could come and be like, no, guys, you're, this is wrong. You guys are, you know, we shouldn't do what you guys are saying. So the president obviously can't come and tell these guys to go F themselves. Nobody can extreme, except the Supreme Leader. So not a random, like some important person. OK, so not a, not just a religious wacko. Definitely a religious wacko. But it, but not just a religious wacko. Um, so just wanted to let you guys, you know, because a lot of times people think like you know we just go look for the worst of the worst to just represent um, to make it everything look bad. But no, like this guy, you know, these are these these kind of people are get get very high positions in Iran. Anyways, let's see what it, what is enough jib jab. Let's see what this guy is saying. All right, so this so he starts by in the Quran, obviously, um, in the Quran, chapter twenty-one, verse one hundred seven. By the way, this guy is not he's he doesn't get his membership just because he's you know uh, he is considered an Islamic theologian, right? So a scholar, quote unquote, scholar, right? So let's see the type of logic that he uses to get to the conclusions that he get, and let's see what passes as an Islamic scholar in Iran. Probably got it from Hosea el in Qom. Let me see. Okay, what is the All right, so he just switched from speaking Persian to speaking in Arabic, okay? For people that don't know, not everybody in Iran speaks Arabic. In fact, either if you speak Arabic, you're either very religious um, or yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and if you speak Arabic, it's just, oh, yeah, I mean, okay, so you could find rare examples that somebody's good in Arabic. Um, if you're not Arab yourself, like maybe you're in Khuzestan somewhere in Iran and you're Arab yourself. But if you're not an Arab and you're in Iran and you speak Arabic, the chances are 
99% chance, I just pulled that out of somewhere, but that you're very religious. And you're, you, you, can't, you switch to speaking Arabic, especially if you're reading a Quranic verse, you don't, read the, you don't just start by reading the translation, you want to show off your Arabic skills. And a lot of Sunni, by the way, a lot of non-Iranian Sunni, Iranian-hating Muslims make fun of uh, Iranians' Arabic accent to, to, and a lot of religious people in Iran try to really speak Arabic very well to show how good they are at Islam. Anyway, so he, he just switched from Persian to Arabic. He's probably going to give a translation of it after in Persian because he knows most of his audience doesn't speak Arabic. All right, so what is he saying in Arabic? He's reading, the, well, this is the Quranic verse. So the Quranic verse saying, We have sent you not but as a mercy for mankind. So when, the, when the, in the Quran, when it says you, when you read the translation, it says you, the you is not directed as, at the reader. I'm going to say always, I'm going to say most of the time, but it's probably always. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's directed, the, the, the you is directed at Muhammad. Right, so when you're reading the Quran, it's uh, often it's you feel like you're not even part of the conversation. You feel like this is not really directed at you. This is a conversation between Allah and Muhammad, and you just eat, like you're just listening to them having a chit chat. In the world, the conversation is just one way: Allah to Muhammad, right? And if usually when the when the message is directed at us. Me and you reading the Quran. It doesn't. God directly doesn't tell me like, "Hey, you who's reading this book." No, it says, "Muhammad, tell people this." So even then, when there's a message for us, you feel like he's not even talking to us. He's telling like, "Muhammad, go tell people this and this and that." So when you see when you hear you in the Quran, is usually God telling Muhammad you. So we have sent you not but as a mercy for mankind. Well, thanks God. So God is saying, Muhammad, like we sent you as a gift, as a mercy, as a blessing to, um, to the rest of us. Thanks. But okay. But before we continue, let's see what kind of a conclusion. You know, there are some verses. <laughs> this is the beauty of Islam. Uh, you get some verses in the Quran that could be about something that very basic, like oh, we sent you as a mercy. God is this. God is that. God loves that loves this hates this hates that and you could get so some all the conclusions that your imag the limit is your imagination okay so let's see what conclusion does this guy want to get from a verse like this <laughs> so now he's speaking in persian now he's translating the arabic word. so he's saying in in principle, the heart of the prophet mission is mercy. Um, so he's saying, okay, so, okay. So now he's adding some stuff to it, okay? He, well, you see the, so this is this was not in the verse, right? But he's, he's trying to add some, quote unquote logic to it and he's saying so God is saying you're the, basically that verse meant that the essence of your prophethood the reason why you're sending mercy so that means that the jihad and the violence that we also directed you to do is also mercy so so that was you know so he a we sent you as a mercy so he concluded from that therefore jihad and violence that we ask you to do is also mercy that's b now from b what is he going to conclude let's see where he's going to go <laughs> so like how could this be how could bloodshed be mercy to mankind <laughs> So, <laughs> so he's like, you know, there's t different kinds of bloodshed. You have an executioner and you have a surgeon. The executioner spills blood and the surgeon also sp spills blood. But one of them is supposed to, is, is spilling blood to kill. The other one is spilling blood to heal. So the jihad 
and the bloodshed that is done in the name of Islam is the surgeon type of bloodshed, not the executioner kind of type of bloodshed, right? So it's meant to like, you see, have the, who's a patient in this scenario? The patient is a society, right? So when, when we do jihad on people, we're technically doing surgery <laughs> on the society and we're healing the society. And th yes, there's blood, but it's the healing type of blood shit. Okay? <laughs> okay. What's the difference? What is his, he, he asks, what is the difference between a surgeon's blade and the blade of an executioner? They both, both make one bleed. Both cause pain and both tear the flesh and the skin. Well, technically, the surgeon's one doesn't cause pain. Or well, maybe after you wake up. One brings mercy. Wait, wait, where did he go? You know, I, I forget to pause the translation because I know what he's saying in Persian, so I forget to read the English for you guys. One, br so I feel like you guys are understanding it as well. One brings mercy and joy, and the other brings torment and misery. Oh, that's um, so here's it. <laughs> here's how. I mean, obviously the analogy is. I, I was gonna use a word that I'm not allowed to use on YouTube, but you get my point. So here's an interesting thing. So if I if I go back to Iran, I was born in Iran. I can't go back to Iran. Why? Because if I go back to Iran, I will get executed. Why? Well, because I am an ex-Muslim, but more than that, I started Atheist Republic. I wrote a book called Why There Is No God. So yeah, if I go back to Iran, I'll, I'll get executed. But don't worry, because that's the healing type of execution. So think about this. In the analogy that <laughs> in the analogy that he's using, you have two types of bloodshed: surgeon and executioner. And if I go back to Iran, I'll get executed. But me being killed by an executioner, being executed, in his mind, that is not the same as an ex. I being literally executed by an executioner but even though that is what's happening because of my opinions not because i killed anybody not because i hurt anybody because of my opinions i'm going to get executed and even though this is an actual execution a literal execution for in his analogy <coughs> that is not the same as his symbolic executioner that is the surgery type even though literally this is an execution, but to him, in his symbolism, in this, in his analogy, that's closer to the surgery rather than the execution. I'm the disease. I'm the tumor, and they're just removing me from. Just, just getting rid of. Just the healing of society. Anyways. Let's see what he says continues because the juicy part is still not there like this was like this was just a teaser right so we'll see how this goes Khomeini said clearly that Khomeini by the way I don't know if you I'm, I'm assuming most of the people that watch this channel know these things but I'm just gonna say it anyway uh, Khomeini and Khomeini don't confuse these people guys come on you guys I'm hoping you guys are more aware uh, and then average people Khomeini was the person that started the Islamic Republic of Iran he died, he's dead. The Khamenei guy is the guy after him. It's just a coincidence that their names are similar. They, so yeah, Khomeini died and Khamenei is now the supreme religious leader. So he's talking about Khomeini, the dead guy, the guy that started the Islamic Republic of Iran. The guy responsible for hijacking the 1979 Islamic Revolution. So Khomeini said clearly that this is the home of all the world's revolutionaries. 
So yeah, Khomeini didn't Khomeini didn't think that the revolution of Islamic revolution of 1979 was an Iranian revolution. His dream was that this is an Islamic and worldwide revolution, which did never happen. He died without that coming true. <laughs> So, I know you, you could tell where this is going, right? So he's saying Iran, this is like, this is some excuses for being involved in world politics when it comes to the Islamic Republic's ideology. And this is this is in this guy's interest, right? Because he doesn't just want to be um, cultural, um, the the leader of a cultural movement in Iran. He wants to be a leader of a cultural movement globally. And he's reminding people that that was Khomeini's dream. And this, that Iran was supposed to be the hub for all revolutionaries all around the world. Not just um, spreading Islamic, uh, the Islamic Republic's ideology within Iran's borders. Right? <laughs> this is a second home for all of them. <laughs> we are loyal to, to his words and plan to topple all of these regimes. So, he's saying like, even though Khomeini is dead, we're going to continue his mission. We will fight until all these oppressing reg oppressor regimes, thinking like United States, Israel, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates. Who else do you think they're talking about? Um, Egypt. Who else do you think they're talking about? Probably all of. European countries, at least the Western European countries, definitely the UK, definitely Germany now, again, because recent there's some Germany apparently decided not to congratulate Iran recently on their uh, the anniversary of the Islamic Republic's Iran. I didn't, yeah, which is yeah, nobody should congratulate them. So now Iran and Germany are going back to being angry at each other. So that's interesting. So yeah, so. I mean, to show these videos to people that say like, oh yeah, Iran is like not a terrorist country. The, this, the top leader of, like this guy's job is not, even the people that are not in charge of foreign intervention, this guy's job is to focus on within Iran and make sure all the education and everything cultural, arts, music, paintings, like everything that, uh, movies, radio, Everything is as uh, like as a, not violating anything Islamic, right? This is his job. Even this guy is like, yeah, I'm, can you expand my role? Like, I'm, we're sub the Khomeini's mission is like we have to be a place for all revolutionaries everywhere, not just within this border. Like, even the, I mean, well, technically he goes around the world and gives lectures and stuff. So I guess he's his his job is to also go around and give his opinions on things. Um, but yeah. So he's actually literally saying that we want to topple these other governments. Like he's not like, oh, we're just gonna like, like pray for them or give them support or like, yay, go on revolutionaries. Like, no, they want to actively be part of toppling these other governments. Fat Konim, not just toppling, they want to invade it. Wait, it. Was that in the translation? We plan to conquer. Yes, conquer. Not They want to topple it, they want to conquer. So not, they're not just going to go topple these governments and then go back home. Like, hey, here's, we toppled, we removed the Trump from, we saved you from Trump, now we're going to go back home and you guys could have, be free. They want to conquer these countries, okay? They want to conquer it. Again, I'm telling you, this guy is not like just some random religious nut job, okay? The, the <laughs> these are these are what you're dealing with when it comes to uh, the hardliners in Iran's government. In the conflicts in America, so by conflicts he means the race wars, right? In America, that involve blacks and people of color. Wait, where is the beginning of the sentence? We have to make our presence felt in the conflicts in America that involve blacks and 
people of color. So this is probably going to increase. Like you're going to see them. Th th just just so you know, like you you you're not even going to see them coming, right? So what's going to happen is going to you're going to start noticing. I mean, I've already started noticing, and some people better than me have been noticing this for a few years more than I have. That there's Shia gatherings are increasing in a lot of Western countries, right? Like Ashura, Tasua, like other other Shia, you know, events are increasing, and they're getting some more resources, more funding, more education. And it's not like Iran is just going to come and like send like people there, like oh, we are official representative of the Iranian government here in United States, and we want to tell the black people. No, it's not going to happen like that, right? It's just gonna be like it's just gonna be something religious. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be that in your face. It's just gonna be like some religious gathering, some events and stuff. And anybody that opposes them is gonna be basically standing against um, religious people's religious freedom, right? So you really, it's really gonna be difficult to stop that. And again, uh, so you're gonna see more, more Shia-themed religious gatherings in your backyard. More of you are going to start noticing that and, you know, more and they're going to be appealing to trying to be appealing to a lot of people that are frustrated with how their minority groups are treated. Right. And these people are going to try to use that as a way to recruit them. You can see the Latino communities have been a major target by some Sunni groups and the Shia groups are going to want a piece of that right now. And, you know, it's been working for. Muslims in, for example, in Germany, the Turks have dominated that market uh, in Germany. In some places, in Vancouver, Shias are, are rising. So this is like a major competition be between Sunnis and Shias as well. But kind of, actually, no. Um, well, that's too much detail. I'm not going to bore you with that guy. But Sunni, uh, the the Turkey is better at recruiting Sunnis around the world. But it used to be Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia failed miserably at that. They completely lost control over the people that were supposed to be their proxies. Uh, Iran has been very, very successful in some specific countries like Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, um, you know, in Bahrain, in, in Yemen. But now they're going to try to, now they've been trying to go in some places where Shia communities are big, are bigger than they used to be because of like all this immigration and stuff. But they don't have that much of a presence and they got to be there. They're going to show up there and it's very sneaky because there's no way really to stop it because you're going to be violating people's religious freedom. But then the more sh organized the Shia groups become, the more eventually, you know, Iran is going to come and flex its muscle over, over these communities. That's how the influence they're going to have. You're going to see more... Um, you know, YouTube videos of people saying like, oh, like, don't trust the mainstream media. Uh, Iran is completely misunderstood. Did you know this? Did you know that? Or like, oh, but and they're going to be some anti-Sunni propaganda, you know, oh, the terrorists are Sunni. Did you know that there is no Shia terrorists in, in, in Western countries? Like stuff like that. You're going to see more of that happening. You're going to see Jose. Why did I forget to say this? You're going to hear mention of the name, the sneakiest way that the Shia, sneakiest way that the Shias get it, get uh, people is that they don't even introduce it as a religion sometimes, right? They're like, they don't say like, have you considered Islam? No, 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 no. Have you considered Shia Islam? No, 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 no. This is what they will say. Do you know about Hussein? Do you know who Hussein is? Do you know what he did for free? You guys like freedom right now, right? You want to meet, you want to know the history of the world's greatest freedom fighter? That's, you're going to hear Hussein. They're going to smuggle in the Hussein. Even some of them are going to act like they're um, Islamophobes just to get Islam. Islamophobe, by the way, is a nonsense terminology, but they're going to act like that. Um, you're going to want to be branded as Islamophobes so that a whole bunch of right wingers get interested in them. Uh, but you know how they're going to do that? Because they're, they're going to mostly be anti-Sunni. They're not going to be, they're going to be like, yeah, like, as these terrorists, these, like, these 
I don't know. You, you, you'll notice when I hear it. You're going to be like, oh, the, this hadith is bad. That hadith is bad. Oh, look at this religious leader saying this. This is dangerous. We shouldn't let these people hear. Uh, but by the way, do you know there's a part of Islam that is against all of that? And they're going to mention Hussein. Anyways, they're going to they're gonna say, okay, that's too much detail for this video. Let me see. So, say, in the conflicts in America that involve blacks, and people of color. Okay, let's continue. There's fertile ground. He's saying there's there is fertile ground for this. Like so, there's a lot of opportunities to get people, um, especially in my like um, in black communities or other minorities. There's a lot of opportunities there in the United States. With, reg with regards to with regards to the American people, let me tell you this. Wait, I keep forgetting that you guys don't understand Persian. Hold on. Um, let me read this. Okay, so what's the opportunity in the fabric? In their fabric and oppressing structure. Oh, if their if their media fabric and oppressing structures loosen just a little bit. <laughs> America is the kind of country that will disintegrate quickly. <laughs> These guys think that they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna be able to topple the United States. I'm not just saying this. I have traveled to America two or three times. Well, then you're an expert. Like <laughs> you're the, you're an expert in America. You have been there, not not one time. Not he's not even sure two or three times, three times. So he knows. It's just it's just ready to fall apart. <laughs> I talked to different types. In, I talked uh, with different types in seminars. This guy's a scholar, okay? Let's see what his analysis. Like he talked to some people. Okay, so he didn't just went to America, okay? He didn't went there just two or three times. How could you not know if you went there two or three times? Is it two or three? But he also talked to people. There are layers of hatred, alienation, and estrangement there. Really? In the United States? Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. But what other country has that? Okay, I might be doing some whataboutism, but it's not whataboutism if you... Again, a lot of people don't understand how whataboutism works. Whataboutism is say like, oh, look, A is bad. You're like, yeah, no, you say like, that's not a problem because B is also bad. Or B is worse. Or why are you talking about A? Look at B instead. That's what about ism, right? But what about ism? It's not what about ism if you say like if somebody says A is bad, and I say well you're endorsing B and B is the same way. I'm not saying A is good. I'm not endorsing A, but you are, you know, is pointing out hypocrisy is not what about ism, because what about ism is excusing A by trying to look at B. If you don't excuse A, but look at somebody and call them a hypocrite because they're pointing out the flaws in something while endorsing something very similar or even worse, that is just pointing out hypocrisy. That is not what about is. And this is what this guy is doing. It's like there are layers of hatred, alienation, and estrangement there in the United States. Really? Okay. But guess what other country that describes? A lot more! The one that you have a flag of behind you. Iran. I mean, come on. Are you serious? You're talking about a country where like news after news after news comes of people you're arresting and protesters and people, women taking off their hijab and protesting the totalitarianism over there. And you're talking, it's, you're talking, you're, and the amount of dissatisfied people in, in Iran, it's at least way more than... 80 person, I'm um, okay. At least, at least 75 percent. And this is the this uh, people will hate me for saying this because people, a lot of people will say, No, I mean, it's not 75 percent, it's like 99.9 percent, .9%. whatever. 
but it's at least 75% of people in Iran want this government to fail. Top, you know, they don't support the Islamic Republic of Iran. Whether, and even among these might be people that say like, oh, maybe it shouldn't top up because we're, we're screwed if it gets, um, we might have a uh, civil war and stuff. We might turn to Syria and Iraq, but it's not because of their love for the Islamic Republic. The, your approval rating in Iran of the government is way lower than what it is in the United States. And the amount of division that exists among people is way more than the United States. And you're, you're talking about, oh, like, yeah, the amount of hatred. And this is your sign that their, their government is at the verge of collapsing their whole country. So what does that say about Iran then? <laughs> However, the oh, that's right. <laughs> he, he just swore. Uh, however, the convincing uh, no, no, not the convincing, uh, the conniving regime. They they're trying to translate Peder Sukhta, but there is no accurate translation for that. Well, fine, the conniving. The conniving regime controls everything through the media. <laughs> He's serious. United States controls everything through the media. You guys own your media. Like, you look at your job. They are controlling the media. Sure, like, every time you look at CNN, Fox News, and MSNBC, they're all talking. They're all hating their government. They're, well, not they're hating. They're criticizing the government left and right. Is that allowed in Iran? Even the... Your job... They control everything through their media. United States does. Really now. Really. Y your job at the member of Shoraya Aliyah, Farangiya, freaking Islamic, whatever, is job is to make sure everything in media and education is, is Islamic. And you're saying United States controls their media. Okay. God damn it. Let me actually see if that's an accurate translation because that's such a level of hypocrisy. Believe, yeah, the, the translation is accurate. Believe me, if this loosens a little, the entire structure will disintegrate. So, United States is just at the verge of collapsing. Just, just die in a bit. You just have to poke at it. Like, you like... Just go and get their blacks and be like, just use them. And they'll, you know, they, the only reason why it's not collapsing right now is because they're controlling the media. But you just remove their PR and all the things. And the, you really, it really sounds like you're describing Iran. Okay, if, okay, this is actually now he addresses the uh, Iran. He's, he's saying if they face 1% of the pressure we endured in 2009. And other occasions. So what pressure is he talking about? What pressure is he talking about in 2009? He's talking about the protests. He's talking about people showing up in the street and protesting. So he's saying if United States experiences 1% of that. They will disintegrate. Now think about that. Think about that for a second, okay? So... He says there's a lot of dissatisfaction, hatred, division in the United States and they're at the verge of collapsing. They just need our help a little bit using their blacks and they will just fall apart, right? But, and they're so fragile that they, if they experience 1% of what we, the protests that we experience, they will fall apart. But, but why do, why are they not experiencing 1% of the protests that you're experiencing? Huh? Why? So, the protests are a sign of dissatisfaction, are they not? So, if you have, I'm just using your, I'm not saying these numbers are accurate, but I'm just using your numbers, this guy's numbers, right? If you have a heart, if they have 1% of the pressure, because you don't address what the pressure is, because it's so like, ooh, like the, we shouldn't directly say that people are against the government, that would be too taboo, right? So, you're just saying pressure, what pressure? Man, yeah, pressure. Uh, so, the, pr the pressures are the protests. Right? So if you're experiencing a hundred times more protests against your government, I mean, not even if, you're saying they haven't, they don't, they don't even experience that one percent, right? So you're experiencing a hundred, why do you have that much protest? Because of dissatisfaction. Because of the, the hatred that you're talking about of the government. 
So you just contradicted yourself. You just said there's a lot of hatred and you know dissatisfaction and whatever division in, in the United States. But now you're saying they, if they experience one percent of the pressure, a pressure that is a sick sign of this of hatred and dissatisfaction. So if they're not experiencing that pressure, what does that say about your country? And that's not even taking into account that is free in the United States to stand up against your government. You could go in the streets in the United States, you could go in the streets and you're like, I hate Trump. No one's going to arrest you. Try that in Iran. <laughs> no, don't try that in Iran. Well, unless you want to be an activist and you, in that case, thank you so much. But that's your decision. I'm not encouraging to you anybody to do that. If you do decide to do that, you're a goddamn hero. I salute you, but I'm not encouraging anybody to risk their lives, okay? So, I mean, is that an encouragement? It's your decision. I'm not, I'm not, oh, God damn it. I'm going to get in trouble. Anyways, I don't care. I'm already in trouble. Um, but yeah, so, so even if you take, don't take into account that in, in, in the United States, you could have YouTube videos against the government. The mainstream media is even can say things against the government. You could print books against the government. You could say whatever you want against the government and nobody's going to show up at your house and come arrest you. And in Iran, even this recent, like just a mere suggestion, like, hey, maybe the Supreme Leader should resign. All the people that signed that letter, they've been arrested. This is not like early Islamic revolution. This is not 40 years ago. This is today. And even so, if you stand up against the government in Iran, you could get, you're putting your safety at risk, you're putting your freedom at risk, you're putting your lives at risk. And people still do it. And people still do it. And by your admission, a hundred times, more than a hundred times more than the United States, they're not even facing 1% of the pressure, not even 1%. And then you're saying they have more hatred and division. You just didn't this, am I like, Tell me if my logic is flawed. Isn't this guy just contradicting himself? So if they go, if they will disintegrate, then what is, then why are, then you should be this, like you should fall apart tomorrow then. Wait, 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 wait. I keep forgetting that you guys don't understand Persia. There is hatred for various kinds of, kinds there. Yeah, okay, tell us what's your hatred. And we are not taking proper advantage of it. You're not taking, <laughs> this is the, the stuff that you don't actually say, but you plan on, but this guy is just saying it out loud. You want to take advantage of people's hatred. Not a, we're not going to take advantage of people's love. And okay, anyways, this is. Whether we are unable to do it, uh, not up to it, or don't want to do it. I don't know. It's like, why aren't we not there? Why are we not? This guy is complaining, right? Like, why are we not in the United States and taking advantage of the, 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 the satisfaction of the minority communities there, like blacks and people? Why, why, why are we not using that uh, in our advantage? Why are we not using the hatred? <laughs> We need to send out several thousands of people surplus of surplus people to do this. Honestly, like if this was done, if if you if I go on a show and I say like let's say I go to somebody invites me on a podcast or a YouTube channel or I get invited to speak somewhere and I tell people they're planning to send thousands of their Islamic I. I don't know, PR people, they're going to spread Islam here. Be, be worried, be afraid. People are like, oh my God, Armin is like a fear monger. Like, holy crap. Like, this is like real co conspiracy level nonsense. This guy, <laughs> this guy, is, I don't have to say that stuff. I just have to play this video. It's again, this is not just like a random guy. It's, he's not just a, just only a professor either. He's actually, oh God. Like how they're making it, they're just telling you. Like sometimes I go and these other, you know, YouTubers say stuff like, there is no evidence for this. 
no, uh, this is this is fear mongering. Nobody can show this. They're like, they're, they're not even hiding it. What do you mean there's no evidence? They're not even trying to hide it. They should be sent to different countries and they should spread there. I'm not talking about you because he's talking to a bunch of older old people. I'm not talking about you, but about younger people. He's, uh, he's making a joke. The audience is going to laugh. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because there's a bunch of old, like, you guys shouldn't go there. We should send our young Islamic <laughs> jihadists and they should go and get married. Get Go get a Canadian wife or go get American wives uh, and stuff like that. <laughs> this is such a also like imagine w being an Islamic young Islamic guy Basiji guy in Iran and watching this video like holy crap they might be they might send me to they might fund <laughs> these people are actually gonna pay me money and send me to United Kingdom and give me an, a British wife and I'm a, and this is gonna be my job <laughs> like imagine like how many people oh God. These young people should marry the local girls and stay and to live there. How many people would line up for this job, huh? In in Iran. <laughs> like the, the, a lot of these liberal anti-Islamic Iranians, their dream is to be able to get away, uh, get out of their country one day, right? And they can't, like, they're trying to get visas, they're trying to get, like, I don't know, different methods, student, student visa, some type of, you know, amnesty, whatever. I don't know, they're, everybody's trying different methods, and it's really hard. And the, the ones that are, there are some of them that just want a better lifestyle, but there are other ones that actually legit need to get out, because their lives that is a danger, right? And they can't get out, and the ones that are the safest ones there, that have all the privileges, because they're, you know, religious, they're gonna send. They're gonna send those guys out. They're gonna fund their, uh, you know, and they're gonna also tell them to go get married. And we'll still, still send you money. And your job is just to set, spread Islamic Republic's propaganda in wherever you are. And that. Uh, this is how this uh, the situation will change. We, you know, that England with its vile goals vile goals you just said that you are gonna take young people and s spread them in the western countries so that they could marry the local girls and step a send the young people so young people out step b marry local girls c topple the government and then, <laughs> okay, that is, <laughs> that is your goals, and you're talking about, this is like, honestly, this is, <laughs> this is comedy, uh, and you're talking about England's vile goals, let's see what England's vile goals are. We should do this, okay, so he's like, they have vile goals, but we have divine goals, <laughs> they have vile goals, we have divine goals. In the 19th century, England sent a surplus population it, it did not send pure people but impure ones from its prison Smugglers and thieves I know what he's talking about it had a population surplus of several hundreds of thousands right so it sent them to australia to south america to south africa to five countries okay all right i mean Australians should be pretty pissed at this guy. He just called them all criminals and vile. So he say like he's like we should follow. So he's like okay, let's copy the British Empire or whatever, the imperial, the evil imperialist methods. But there's a difference. They we're gonna copy them, but the difference yeah. But we're not saying that whatever they did is a good thing. The difference is we have divi divine goals. 
and they have vile goals. So we're copying their evil ways for a good cause. After all, they are the ones who founded Australia and these countries. They were all English. We, however, can send pure people. So, <laughs> God, uh, these people are so full of it. They really think they're so holy. <laughs> we, okay, so they did this. It worked for them. But we're going to do, they, they send their, the worst of their worst. They send them all around the world. But we're going to do that, but better. We're going to send our best, our pure young people. We have such good young people in our religious seminaries and universities. And they all, they, these young people, they're always asking, what should we do? How can we help? How, what can we do? Like, it's, like these kids, like these young, it's talking about religious education centers, not the, not the ones that are actually learning science and, you know, useful stuff. I almost said the S word. YouTube is like, watching me if I swear by the way the reason why I'm not swearing is not because of any of you guys in the comment section that is telling me not to swear because I don't give a rats you know what about swearing swearing is good but I you guys didn't pressure me into not swearing it was YouTube that pressured me because their algorithm is so uh, like what doesn't let me swear anyways um, it's not like we're getting any views from these anyways because everything I say is controversial so share 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 this video because YouTube is not recommending it. Anyways, what are you saying? So, yeah, so in these uni religious universities and, some, you know, Jose El Mian, whatever they have, there's so many religious, eager young kids that just want to go and, like, we just don't want to study as long. We want to do something, but we're not brave enough to go die in Syria and stuff like that. So give us something else. Like, how about you go marry foreign white girls? Yes, that! That! I'm on that job! As God is my witness, if they are, if they are managed properly, thousands of people can undergo training for two or three years and then be sent abroad. Not to carry out military operations and so on. This is a, this is a dream come true for a lot of people. Don't worry, it's not even risky. No military operation. They should, they should go on and live there and deal with cultural projects. If they can do it yourself, they should do it too. <laughs> what, what is he? That was a joke. That, I don't know what he was referring to. They should go and have a social and cultural presence. Everything will change there. Quran 475 says is a clear call for armed struggle, guerrilla warfare, Jesus Christ. And armed combat throughout the world. Wherever there is an oppressed person, even even if not a Muslim, that means the five continents of earth. Again, tell me how. Kyle Kalinske from Secular Talk, tell me again how these Shias are not terrorists. Tell me how most terrorists are Sunnis. Tell me, tell me that again. These guys... Oh God. That was something, wasn't it? Anyway, let me know what you think. And subscribe! Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. God damn it, we're trying to grow this. We we did this late. Subscribe. Get your get everybody you know to subscribe. Everybody share this video. Hit the bell thingy. It's probably over here. Hit it. And also subscribe to our newsletter. Because YouTube doesn't want us to grow. YouTube hates us. So subscribe to our newsletter. So at least we could email you directly. And share the video.